Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we'll be talking about rate limiting. Now, rate limiting or throttling, as it is also called, is a technique by which we impose certain limits on how often somebody can hit our endpoint and actually get back data. So, of course, if somebody comes and bombards the endpoint, as much as we have caching and all these things, the fact is that the endpoint is actually prone to a denial of service or DDoS attack. And what we want to do is kind of put a mechanism in that when we detect too many requests from one source, we can kind of block them and say, hey, you're overdoing it. Outside of the potential DDoS attack, it actually helps us to kind of meter how often any one client accesses data. And many very popular APIs out there, Google, and well, I'm just going to say Google, but all of those big players with APIs and their SDKs, they all have some form of throttling. If you read the requirements and the terms of use of their APIs, they all have something in there to say you can request maybe 100 per minute or 100 per hour, stuff like that. So today we're going to be setting it up in our API just to get a feel of how it's done. And we'll be using the library ASP.NET Core Rates Limit. So we can just go ahead and install that. And once that is installed, the next thing that we want to do is go over to our startup and allow our application to use memory cache because it's going to use memory cache to kind of store and keep track of who requested what and how many times they've requested it in the timing, right? So we can just say services.addMemoryCache right there in the configure services function. And then we have some modifications to make to service extension. So I have the code here already and this method is called configure rate limiting. And we already know the drill about the service collection. And what we're doing here is setting up a set of rules. So you can just go ahead and copy the code and include any missing references as you go along. So var rate limit rules equals new list rate limit rules. So you can have multiple rules. So we have to initialize a new rule object, which allows us to specify the particular endpoint. So in this case, I'm saying star, meaning every single endpoint is going to adhere to this rule. So based on this structure, I can actually have multiple rules. I can say comma and do a new rule. All right, let me just copy and paste. I can do a new rule, specify a particular endpoint and then change the limit. So this one says you're limited to one call per second. Right, uh, that's kind of short. I mean, we can say 10 seconds, one call every 10 seconds. I can say one call every 10 minutes, you know, or 100 calls. It's up to you, you can configure it. And once again, if you have different rules per endpoint, you can go ahead and add these rules and specify the particular endpoints to which they are applicable. Right now, I'm just going to set a global rule. So I'm just going to say all endpoints, and I'm going to set it to something that is very small so that we can see it in test, right? So I'm going to say within five seconds, you're only allowed one call on any endpoint. Then we go ahead and we say services.configure and we put in the IP rate limit options and we just say options.generalRules equal the rate limit rules that we just defined. Outside of that, we need to add these singleton services in the form of I rate limit counter store. And that is going to be associated with memory cache rate limit counter store. So all of these are just bits of code that are required to support the library that we imported. So a different library might implement it differently, but this is the code required for this particular library. So you can just hit pause, write them off. Um, at this point, IntelliSense will be filling them in because you already have the package. Now, after we're done in service extensions, we're just going to head back over to startup and we're going to add these two lines services.configure limiting, which is the method we just configured, and services.addhttp context accessor. So this gives us access to the actual controller and its inner workings when needed. And then finally, we're going to add the middleware where right above routing, so I'm going to put it right underneath the caching. We have app.useIP rate limit. And of course, include any missing references. Now, there have been different response codes used when there are 
you know, responding to say too many requests. Um, in more recent times, 429 has been used, which literally means too many requests. But in the past, I've witnessed um, platforms using 420, which means enhance your calm and other ones. So let's test this out. So for country, I'm going to hit send. And if we observe the headers, we'll see that we get back three new headers, X rate limit, X rate remain limit remaining and limit reset right so it's showing you that the limit is five seconds you have no more remaining for the five second window and that uh, the reset is going to be at this timestamp so if i hit this multiple times all right i'm going to use a different endpoint because i think this one is protected by caching so it might not based on my caching configuration it's not going to violate the throttle all right, so I'm going to use the hotel because remember that we set up all of those things on the country endpoint. So let me go to hotel, which I didn't really modify as much. So I already sent a request and it's showing me the same headers, rate limit, etc., etc. If I send another one, more than five seconds later, it's okay. If I send another one, too many requests, right? So it says retry after. And it's basically say, saying send another request after one second. So nothing came back but the message API calls quota exceeded maximum admitted one per five seconds, right? So it's letting me know that I need to try back in this amount of time. And when I do, there we go. If I try again, retry after four seconds, try again. And if I keep on doing that, you see that that value keeps on changing relative to the number of seconds that I have based on the last request. So that is how we can add throttling and it automatically once again gives back that 429 to say too many requests, all right? And that message, so the client knows that, hey, you're bombarding the API, enhance your calm.